Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's time for Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. Thank you for joining me today. This is Sue Taylor on Faith to Live By. Let me ask you, are you excited about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? As Christians, we are told that we should be watching and looking for His return. There are many things in scriptures that tell us about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And although we may not hear many sermons on this today, we can rest assured that His Word declares that He is coming back and He is coming back for us. The first thing about His second coming is that it is foretold. In Matthew twenty six sixty four, it says, Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied, but I say to all of you that in the future you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Also in Luke, it says, At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is told throughout Scripture. In Acts, it says, Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand there here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many people, and he will appear, it says, a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. So it is foretold throughout Scripture that Jesus Christ will come again. The second thing is that it is unknown when he will come. It says, For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. It will be a quick coming, beloved. It will be unknown, but it will be very quick. It says that no one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. In Luke, it says you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. So we do not know when Jesus is returning. And we can't second guess a mysterious, awesome, wonderful God about when he has said enough and it's time for him to send forth Jesus Christ. But it says in 1 Thessalonians, For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. And in Revelations, it says, Jesus said, Behold, I come like a thief, and blessed is he who stays awake and keeps his clothes with him, so that he may may not be naked and be shamefully exposed. This indicates that we are to be clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ and to be ready because we do not. We do not know the time of his coming. The uh, the third thing is that his time, his second coming is is always spoken of though as near at hand, and I believe that this is really to keep us alert and to keep us ready and looking for his great return. It says, "Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near." It also says, "For in just a very little while, he who is coming will come, and will not delay." says, you too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Jesus said himself in Revelations 3, 11, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. And, you know, this is so important, beloved, to be ready because we do not know the time. And, you know, many people say, oh, I've heard this for years and years that Jesus is coming. But believe me, Jesus keeps his word. And we know that in his coming can be at any time. And it is as we look around and see the signs of the times, we know that his coming is very, very near. I was reading just recently in Luke um, after a Katrina storm in New Orleans, and I realized that in um, Luke, I had read that chapter many times. I believe it's the 21st chapter about the the signs of the ends of time, but I never realized where it says that the nations and and the people will be in perplexity and, and almost um, 
confusion because of the roaring and the tossing of the sea. So his coming is is very evident, and the signs are all around us. The purpose of his coming, of course, is, it says is, for the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. So Jesus is coming to reward us. Um, it says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. He's coming to reward us and he's coming to rule. What a wonderful thing to have Jesus Christ as our master and to know that he is really ruling this earth. And there will be no more sin and there will be no more uh, evil lurking about. And it's a wonderful thing. It says all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He is coming to give us our rewards. He is coming so that he might rule. He is coming to separate those who are his and those who are not. And we're not to judge. It says also uh, before the appointed time. 1 Corinthians 4, 5, when we look around, beloved, and we see all these things happening, it is so hard for us not to sit in judgment and and wonder uh, why, you know, men and women live the way that they do and they don't get ready for the second coming. But 1 Corinthians 4, 5 says, therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes and he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men's hearts. At that time, each will receive his praise from God. We'll not only receive rewards and see Jesus Christ rule and and see him separate those that are truly his, but we're also going to receive the praise of God for what we have done and what we've even thought in our hearts It says also in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, he says, I give you this charge. And that is that we are to wait faithfully for the appearing and the coming of Jesus Christ. There are some attitudes that we should hold in waiting for uh, Jesus to return. These are true attitudes concerning and watching for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, we should have an attitude of being ready. Matthew tells us, so you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. So Jesus Christ wants us to be ready for his coming. Secondly, we are to be good stewards, and he is to find us being good stewards. In Luke, he says, so he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minus. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. So whatever God has entrusted to us, he wants us to be a good steward over it. Thirdly, the attitude we should have is patient waiting. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. We should use all of the spiritual gifts and the talents that Jesus Christ has given us while we are patiently waiting for him to come and to take us home. Also, we are to be charitable. It says, therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait till the Lord comes and he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of men's heart. And at that time, each of us will receive his praise from God. We have, while we are waiting for Jesus Christ, we should have a heart of giving to all and when we can. We also should have an attitude of blameless living. It says, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Another attitude concerning the return of Jesus Christ while we are waiting is that we should walk in perfect obedience. 1 Timothy 6.14 says to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And there is a constant abiding also is an attitude that we should have. And now, dear children, continue in him so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. And lastly, and most importantly, we should have a joyful expectation of the coming of our blessed Lord and Savior. While we wait for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, he is the end and the saving of our soul. And we can rest assured, beloved, that he is coming back to get us and to take us home. And may you continue as you wait for him to live by faith. You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. If you would like to write with your comments, 
or to request a copy of this program for an $8 donation, write Sue Taylor, 10827 Highway 86 East, Neosho, Missouri, 64850. Sue Taylor is a member of the KNEO team and a keynote speaker at several church and women's events throughout the four-state area. To book Sue for your next event, contact Sky High Radio at 417-451-5636. Never miss your favorite show again. For more than 30 years, KNEO has been bringing you great Bible teachers on a local and national level. And now, we've made it easier than ever to hear from these great men and women of God. KNEO's entire lineup is now available to listen anytime, anywhere, through our website. Go to KNEO.org slash podcast to see all the options. You can search for programs alphabetically, or you can select individual categories like culture, kids, leadership, or music. We even have a category just for locally produced programs so you can hear from pastors and spiritual leaders located right here in the four-state area. And all these resources are absolutely free. Kaneo's mission is to get God's Word in front of you, and this is one of the ways we do it. Give it a try today. Go to kaneo.org and click on the podcast tab to get started.